uh, afterwards help uh, the missing attendees to uh, catch up. But now is the part for the interactive uh, part for the tutorial where you start to create uh, something or change something. If you go to this uh, YoPet ELA site, uh, ELA 2002, and you have clicked or opened this site so far. So this will be, we have this GitHub repository opened. Simply click on this tutorial uh, link on the second part. So and this will be our task for today. I simply copied the German recipe of a, a noodle soup, ABC soup actually, and uh, simply copied the text. And we will now uh, try to transfer this, translate this into some kind of an interactive a bit of a course, but uh, so that you can uh, get to know the basics uh, of the uh, formatting and how to organize your content and uh, Bit of the details how you start to create content basically so and if you have opened this website so if you see this the first thing uh, because it's simply directly linked uh, to our tutorial but to make this yours probably i want to change this and the results should be stored the first one so it's mentioned here is to create a fork just click on this fork and what it will do, it will now create a new link, actually, but not referring to the original content. And whenever you change something of this content in your course, it will be it will be stored in your browser. When you go back to this, click on this Leah edit, you see these are all the courses, probably or some of the courses that I've created so far. And the last one is this noodle soup that is now, uh, that I can now modify, uh, change, adapt, so and I can come back, open my browser, but you have to use the same browser. Uh, it's not the, uh, because it's stored specifically within this browser, actually. It's also possible to share this. Uh, but so again, if you have this long URL with file, you have to click on this fork. Ah, that's the one. So that's it. Now this, this this is the starting point. This stored within your browser, and you can start. And we will start together to modify it. So this is the idea. Sorry, I'm clicking different. Do I need to see if I'm doing anything on my own? Hmm? Because I realize that default means that I'm trying to edit yeah. or trying to create something. Do I need to see? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the point. Uh, uh, while, while you're typing, so it's actually saved. Okay. But it's not displayed because we don't, it takes a lot of uh, energy actually. So you type in your text, and afterwards, if you make some changes, probably I change the title. My. Book album. You either can hit Control S, it's a shortcut, or okay. you click on this one. So and then it will simply reload oh. the content. So just like reload, and also if you're preferring to simply only write, you can switch to this mode, split view, where it's read. Or if you want to give your presentation directly, you can do this uh, like this. 
And if you have the dark editor and you don't like it at the moment, you simply switch or select onto this one. And if you prefer a lighter one, so for writing, so that it does not look like coding at the moment. But you can uh, simply change the title probably is the first task or simply uh, adapt the title and then reload it. So my new cookbook uh, alphabet soup and then click this one and it highlights in there this control S like when you save it normally it will also do the same. <laughs> So, this is right. okay. So, okay. now we are all at the same starting point. You changed your title uh, and how to say recompile or re-render it, and it worked right. So the next thing, if you inspect your content, so it's a bit of unstructured text so far. And if you see the table of contents, there's just one slide. So everything is just in one. If we want to separate this uh, within Markdown, so how did you get to this one? Okay. So yeah, this is the uh, table of contents. We'll uh, add more content to this at the moment and here's this the kind of settings so it depends if you have a larger screen it will be uh, rendered a bit different so see so it tries to optimize uh, for any kind of device so but we mark those additional steps as you can see with a is the basics a1 a list of ingredients which should be a subsection of a and if you are separating content in Markdown, so the only thing that you have to do is actually to add an hashtag before this. So if I recompile this, okay, my control, there's no content in here on this slide, but actually now everything went to this, I'll simply increase this probably so we can... Hashtag in the space, right. And if you want to have more, something like it's on the same level, right? It should be on a sub-level or something like this. We have also added a, a button in here. So you simply add some another hashtag. You see, it changes another hashtag. It changes a bit smaller. So you can, this way you can create a section, a subsection, sub subsection, And this is just to structure your content. So, and the idea is you start with a basics should be a section of the content and a one probably in this case should be a sub sub section so that i use three hashtags can you see can you increase that yes can you see this yeah. So this is, and your task is actually, we added like A2 to add like Who's familiar with Africa? Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Yes, but it doesn't work. I guess the configuration, the keyboard layout doesn't fit with the right. But what you can also do, uh, if you if you struggle with a hashtag, you just go to this uh, to this uh, to this uh, to this line, and there's this header icon. You see this? Oh, and if you just add. Header, 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 it will add those headers to you. Okay. So this is something. Yes, just where you want to. Yeah, and depending on how much you want to uh, indent it. Did it work? 
I should refresh with this. With this, I think, I think uh, this is the refreshing. Refreshing with That's this. That's the profile. Um, with this icon. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it showed. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely yeah. perfect. We yeah. go to the this slide, the next slide. We go, we go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah the basic slide. Okay. Yeah. The basic slide. Okay. So we just. We're running through the slides. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Did you talk to this man? It's fine. We can them and then swim them in a large bottle of these olive oil. Go to A. So this is three. Mm -hmm. If you want to have it like a subsection, you can make two of it. It's a subsection. So like yeah. so B, you do a subsection again. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Do a subsection. Or see you open B, for example. Also. Triggers. Go to B. Double click on the tiger. Yes. Yes. Double click. Yes. And then it should break that. And the course has changed. Uh, you have to have to vary it. Yes. It's now the pure of this. Okay, so that's a subsection. Let's see, I think it's easier. There's... If the heading basic is 2 hash, does it mean that the subsection should be 3 hash? Uh, 3 hash, yeah, that goes up to 6. It's just like a uh, replacement for the HTML header tag, which also from hash 1 or h1 to h6. So this is just like you can structure your contents up to six sub subsections or what it is. So. so there's one shortcut. I already told you that there is this uh, alphabet super. Let's add the German. You have this control S, which we really renders it. But if you are for navigating purposes, probably you can also go to uh, most cases I'm searching for this text. What you can do is like double click, so because of the header, uh, and we get into the area where this actually is. This, as you see, I'm searching for then an oil, and it skips a uh, jumps like uh, to the according. Uh, and on the other side, you can do control, double click, okay, and it will jump to the slide that you uh, actually uh, selected. So double click on this side, will jump to the, uh, near the uh, text that you want to edit. And from here, double click, from here, control, double click, and then we'll jump to the slide. So just an easy way for navigating. And so you don't have, don't have to open this each time. Okay. So for, for the others, uh, if you are ready, we can start with the basics of our course. If you go to now section A, probably. I think your structure order looks now similar to this. If not, you can change it also afterwards. You can modify it, play around with it, or restructure it, actually. And you see that uh, there are some kind of... These are like three paragraphs that you can see, right? So I have like this text, then there comes a new line, a new, or a new line, an empty line, and then there's this text. So the idea of Markdown is... If you separate it visually, it will be separated. So in this case, so if you remove this new line, for example, and recompile it, then this will become one uh, paragraph. So if you want to create new paragraphs or tables or whatever there is, you always have to separate this by a visual new line. So that's also, you write the text afterwards, just think of it as if you would write the content on a typewriter. And the only thing that you have is a typewriter and you want to uh, make it visually appealing. So in this case, and now is the idea. Probably I want to highlight certain parts of it. So probably my time should be bold, right? So uh, my timings or my minutes. So afterwards, so what you can do if you mark this, so we added some context to this, you click onto bold. So I'll recompile this. 
So you see, this is bold. And the idea is you can use either those buttons or you can use like underscores just like to highlight the certain part. So then it will be actually, so the markdown syntax says one underscore is italic, two underscores, so it's probably more important, so uh, will be bold, and three underscores, absolutely uh, uh, important, will be oops, italic and bold. So this one doesn't show it at the moment, the, the editor, but if we do it like this, so you see it, this has changed. So just like a simple way of annotating uh, parts of the text to highlight them. So this is the bold part. So simply try this out. Sorry, how did I get the underscore? Yeah. There is shift. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Or you can, you can explore, you can explore this also there. The, that's for italic. Yeah. Ah, sorry. But in case I missed this, so it, it has to be it has to be enclosed with those two terms, like two underscores, one underscores, on both sides. So that uh, uh, markdown, if I ever interpre interpret a new, so from here to here, uh, I should create this actually in bold. So in this is like in ordinary words, probably we added some uh, buttons to this. Uh, we can probably uh, like the ingredients like uh, take oil I want to have this underlined so underlined like these uh, uh, I don't know German's called tilde so it's basically it's just another uh, thing for underlined stuff so but, but this if you see this and you see the result it should be actually easy to remember so every markdown you can probably also do something like uh, bold uh, strike through surrounded you can copy the same to your or write your uh, um, whatsapp messages with it because whatsapp does understand a certain part of formulation of this markdown syntax so you can do this a strike through bold italic and cold as you will see so and your moodle editor has also an uh markdown editor in it so everything is it's a basically it's a standard so if you just remember those few things or you see it actually and you see what's the result it should be easy to uh, redo it uh, on every slide uh, for purpose no, I, I just just have a look. I show to you again. I want to have this, for example, just like strike through. This strike through. Okay. Underline. So strike through will be two. Uh, so no strike through. Yeah, strike through. Strike through is two. Yeah, and then strike through is one. Underlined is two. And strike, uh, if you add three, like in the previous idea, it will be underlined and uh, strike through. So just a repetition of this text based pattern. <laughs> Okay, refresh. We need to okay, I need to refresh this. Yeah. Or you refresh. On the S. Yeah. You refresh to get the alcohol. Yeah. Okay, let me try and so and actually you can if you want to you can just experiment with some of the highlighting formats it's just like so it wants to have its uppercase just 
I don't, I'm just uh, playing around, but this is just basic markdown syntax. You have to, don't remember it at the moment, but it's just like if you use those backticks simply, this could be used for code uh, indentation, so it will uh, appear differently. You can use those, uh, let's call those heads, for example, and would uh, just place it uh, a little above. So as you can see, this finally here. And so these are these basic text uh, formatting stuff that you're probably also using Word in most cases. <coughs> Sorry, so the CPU color directly into Chrome. Did you get the color change? The color change. I I use this. Uh, this is uh, highlighting for code. Mm -hmm. If you mark some code mm -hmm. and add this uh, inner code, okay. it will add the back text okay. to the beginning and to the end. And this will just highlight the stuff as in it would be code. Can I change the color? Uh, yes, but this is a bit more difficult. We can change it. This is just a, a basic markdown syntax, but I can show it to you afterwards so that you can extend it with your own ideas and languages and create your own comments if you want to, okay. which are responsible for creating red, blue, or underlined and highlighting colors or whatever there is. If you <laughs> have some independent experiments already here huh? <laughs> using photos and some different types oh, of <laughs> cool. so just try it out. So it just to get uh, so you grasp the idea, right? So that we have this uh, special syntax actually to make something italic and bold and italic and bold it's always the same pattern and like underscore or underlined and strike through and there are some other options available so where you can highlight this if you go to the next slide probably so blocks are separated by new lines and what we now want to do is probably to uh, format this ingredient list so i were already made it actually into this nice format uh, but uh, it would be better to have it like in a bullet point list, right? Because mm -hmm. the system thinks it's in simply in text uh, paragraph. If you want to add the bullet point list, so you simply add, I show it to you like this. So now we have two paragraphs and the first ones like uh, minus, minus, recompile it. And you have this bullet point list. Sorry, how did you create that space? The extra space. Uh, just a new line. You mean I just added some new lines. So it's independent. It could be six or ten or twenty. It will enter. 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 Okay. enter just. So, and you could also either minus you can if you prefer also stars. So it would be the same. Or just have this shortcuts because we create have a button for this simply mark your text and go to this bullet point list list so you see it will automatically attach the star in front of your ingredients and this is like you can create a bullet point list you know, highlight everything yeah, uh, on this one. Okay, on this, two. this one. Yes, you have Yeah, and the other yes. one is you probably, so only one would be boring. I want to. I want to add also. Sub lists into it probably like these two carrots or because they are special so add a bit more ingredients so what you can always do
Uh, you create a space. Four. You create a space, and now to, mm -hmm. I, I will try to take care of the indentation. Okay. So I have to add two spaces in front, and you create like mm -hmm. the first one is a paragraph, and the second one is also a paragraph too. So you can more to this. So you see, I have like a list with two and more paragraphs, and probably. I want to nest a list within a list. What I can do is also I either add like those minuses here in front of it, and now I have a like a sub list if you want to. Can you see this? Yeah, quite easy, right? I mean, just a, and probably let's make another one. I want to add. A numbered list to this like carrots uh one dot red the other one second one should be black and the third one so if you're numbering this you simply add you uh, take care of the indentation so that it belongs to this one otherwise it will treat this as a separate paragraph and then uh well uh, that color is yellow and the yellow carrot. So you see, you have this numbered. And you can proceed this nesting. Nested, uh, I don't know if it makes sense, but actually, but you only have to remember that you have to use those spaces to indent your list properly, and it will be visualized also properly. If you want to separate this list, probably the only thing you have to do is add some more space. Uh, these are ingredients because I'm now breaking this star indentation. It will create something like or separate them uh, by a paragraph. So this is the idea. So separate by new lines the content and just uh, repeat those patterns. Is it clear so far? Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Each action will be saved, right? Yes. Sorry? The bullet points? Yeah. Which one? This one? Up? Low? Where, where should I go? The second one, this one. Uh, this one yeah. I simply uh, added in this so I'm probably it's not that visible I add the star to it I simply take care of this indentation so one two spaces on there and then simply add a new list so you see and I can add a, a new list Probably also this one should be the sub list for this. Okay, I have to exit space and now smaller. So now it belongs to the I wish. No, not empty spaces. Empty Just spaces. Okay, Just space bar, yeah. This way. Yeah. 
And this way, afterwards, you will learn you can add also in the same way images uh, to those lists, uh, and just uh, by using this in the probably indentation, they will be added to the certain bullet point or number or everything else. It might be a table, it might be a piece of code, or so just like typewriter, uh, you just have to structure the content uh, and write it down properly in the text file. Yes. Uh, yes, but the image upload should also be possible. I will show it afterwards. Okay. So the next thing is that we go now to table and quantities. So uh, simply go to the next slide that you've created, probably tables and quantities. And you see, uh, already did some indentation there with spaces, but it doesn't look very good actually. What I want to have is something like a tabular, a table representation. And instead of using this, HTML would be also possible. But uh, how you would do this oops, uh, in the markdown syntax is simply uh, by those those vertical lines. I mean, we just showed to you. The, the next thing is, so this is the head. So then we add some minus minus to it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. It will do it automatically for you. Just wait a second. Wait a second. I separate them. I have to close the table. So this doesn't look very nice, but it will generate. All those signs. Where did you get them from? I now typed it in. But wait a second. You can now also afterwards, if you created the table, you can do something like uh, create a table. Like in this case, it will start with a uh, uh, with a stop, right? And here you can navigate with top, for example. I want to have some uh, another column, and just by adding additional tab, it will uh, also uh, uh, generate this for you. So, automatically generate the corresponding So, in this case, you can extend your table just uh, by adding a vertical bar and then hitting tab. So, in this case, and you create new elements. So, this is just the idea of those tables. So, they don't have to uh, uh, render perfectly so that they are in line. Actually, something like this will work also. So, it will generate the same result. As you can see, I'll remove this. So, probably uh, one thing uh, that we are missing, uh, I want to have this, all these values are on the left side. If I want to move them onto the right side, I have to mark this only with a colon. They move to this, uh, to the right side. If I add another colon uh, to this, they will be centered. So this is just, and th that's it about tables, right? As this is the only thing that you have to new. If you only have a typewriter again, uh, and you want to create a table, you will probably do it in a similar fashion. So. But of course, you can use also uh, you can use also uh, HTML if you want to. But the script gives you one power, as you can see. Uh, it identifies this. Oh, this might be a bar chart in this case, a representation. It simply, and if you click onto this, uh, you now know how many grams of. Okay, uh, most part of it uh, grams will be fed, then there will be some 6.3 proteins, stuff like this. So, and if you add more values, the visualization might change. But also with the table, you can play around with it. 
Uh, you can highlight its grams if you wanted to. If you wanted to make them bold or something like this, just a bit bolder in this case. But this could be also done. Sorry, so I'm here spots. I didn't get it. Ah, uh, I just uh, this should be in tables and quantities. Oh, what do you mean? And I added just this uh, uh, vertical bars to it. Yes, I saw. I saw two in the box. Yeah. What I'm asking, how did you get those values on the substance and grams? This one? No. Yes. The values, uh, they were just from the recipe. I just uh, took some uh, random values. Uh, they are typed, actually, but they, 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 are, they are already in there. So if you add those, go to section A2, table quantities, they should no, be. I'm I'm trying to find out how you export it. You know, you add the substance, gram, and the columns. I should just click on the table. Yeah, and it's a basic structure. Okay, this is structure. Yeah, and now it fits in this. Much better, really. Yes. So you put a vertical line directly to the corresponding. So I will not press end line with the line. End of line. Is it in the second line at the end? Yes. Okay. So we should be able to So drag the center of this. This is what I should process. To realize the substance of the lens is what we need additional information about the type of structure and the alignment of each content. Okay. 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 Okay.
They each one of them, I just oh, have to say, yes. say save or it's the same. Of course, it's the same. We just try the nebulous structure by the Lines. So this box, okay, then I still have to indicate create line. I don't have a capture. Okay. I will see lines. So do I need to create this there? Okay. Yeah. I don't have a capture. Just box. Ah, no box. Ah, yes, you, you make perfect copy, but it's necessary to explain this is a tabular structure. And we have a specific alignment. This means we need to copy this is the second part of the definition. Oh, I didn't get much. Yeah. <laughs> And now, if you, now we have a low form structure okay. now we have space and it's automatically configured. Yes? That's fresh. What do you mean? It's fresh. Of course, I said this. Just a spoiler. If you press the bar chart, you will see automatically the graphic representation of it. Okay, I'll show you. You can try it out something like that. You had another code. Just copy it. Oh, okay. Yes. Just give it another name. Probably. With the substance and everything. Oh, is it just okay? Correct. I should copy it. Control C. Yes. Just copy and then you say correct. 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 Yeah. Correct. Just right. some other codes, just yeah. some other codes. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. What did you think? Which key did you yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. 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 And then general chart. So because it will automatically be okay. 
Okay, now I'm just copying this one up so I just uh, wanted to highlight something or uh, wanted to point you to the documentation if you're interested in what is actually also possible I just don't want to use only tables uh, so if you hit table for example there's math and formulas fun with tables as we call this so there are different kinds of tables that you can generate that will actually generate different kinds of visualizations automatically for you. So this could be uh, line plots simply, this could be scatter plots if you want to have them, box plots that you have seen so far, if you want to have pie charts, simply based on the structure of the table, uh, the representation, the visualization actually of the data will change so everything is also within the documentation in there and since i will uh, just want you to highlight this so uh, if we add this for example in the presentation mode so what is also possible uh, that afterwards these bullet points animations can combine for example with tables if i go further you see this table and there's these values will change Afterwards, I go forward, back and forth. If I do this in a visual representation, you see, dynamically, uh, the representation is also updated. So it's not that fancy for this part, actually, but it's an easy way that you learn everything can be interconnected and will generate something new. So I don't know how such a visualization would be done in or multiple of this you could also add sequences how you do this in powerpoint for example so you see this can be also yeah there's another one but as you can see this could also be a heat map and you yeah. we'll play around with the data and filter it so there's actually much more that you can do but you also the only thing that you have to do or use is actually those table structure so probably uh, would probably to uh, uh, be faster probably the next part would be just uh, that you have an idea so I could fastly go through it and you could then simply afterwards repeat it or something but that you just see what's also possible so proper citation probably this uh, I think you have seen this already uh, within an, uh, when you're creating or writing emails right so then uh, in most cases somehow text Reasons. Uh, started with a uh, uh, less than symbol. So as in your email conversation, uh, you have this uh, less than symbol in front of a paragraph, for example, and will uh, make a. Uh, I forgot the name of this uh, HTML element. Uh, at the moment but this is also like a valid you only add some text and like you use it in 
uh, those emails that add those less signs in front of it, uh, you would generate something like this. And as everything else, uh, you can also properly indent this. So this could be also uh, com be composed of uh, multiple paragraphs or something like this. So it just another way of highlighting some text. This is actually taken from, uh, so the idea for this was taken actually from email, actually. So when Markdown was invented, but you don't have to repeat this. I wanted just to highlight this at the moment, but you can do if you want to. We wanted to uh, skip quicker to the reference part. So how to add external uh, resource references, multimedia. So, okay, so I uh, want to start with links, probably, so like an external reference, if you go to section B, so the easiest way, what you can do is actually to enter your entire URL into it, and it will be highlighted as a link. <laughs> which would be probably for long links, not that nice, or if you want just to name it uh, by yourself. So what you can do, I'll show you the shortcut for this also. There is this, well, just add this, I'll mark this, this should work also automatically. There is this link sign, and if I click it, okay, it didn't work, so I tap name, I have to add the link in here. So I increase this. Uh, I was on the wrong slide, I'm sorry. So, the idea is if you want to just give it the, the name a link, so this will point to the exact same direction as the link above. <coughs> but we have in those square brackets simply a name for the link and we'll do the same and if you want to what you have learned so far you can also combine this again i want to have this as a bold one so it appears bold it could be italic it could be uh, an image it could be a piece of code so it's just an easy way to uh brackets you add, give it a name and afterwards into parentheses you add the url so this is actually like a in right. name a uh, name link. So, so this so is. So how do you do add a name link? I copy this. After copying the link, I'm pasted it. Sorry, yeah. I think it came as HTTP. So no, there's now this. What, what do I do to get the name? Uh, you, well, you have to add it here. Here's this. Where's it? Here's this link button, for example. It will type you a name. Then afterwards, you have to add the Google DE, so it will point to Google, so we can also call it like Google. So this is just like the only pattern, if you're referring to external reference, that you have to uh, remember those square brackets and then parentheses, where you put into the URL. So, if we go further, ah, no, no, semicolon, semicolon, semicolon is for an image. 
So you have to remove for a link. Yes. Ah, this is okay. It's so. It's so. It's so. It's so. It's so. It's Put no, it's just no, it's just it's just highlighted. Sorry. See, I should just highlight it. No, you don't need to highlight. Okay, I should put here this down. Yes. Yeah, Everything is okay, it's just Sorry. like and it's not that one solution is perfect, it's just like so, that you get the idea of yeah, how, what to, you want. how to embed it. Yeah. So I will. So. So also, yeah, we invite you to just if you try it by your own, uh, create a new slide, for example, uh, or create a new content, a new note mm -hmm. for your own, just to play around with it with those buttons actually, like. Uh, I, you yours okay this was the header uh, and then there other ones I, I simply created a new course yeah so this one is my new course and if I, no this one you have to create and go to the uh, click onto the like hummingbird yeah and you create an entire new note for yourself, so oh. an entire course. Okay. 
So simply afterwards. Okay. So we go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that. Mm -hmm. My head for yeah. Delia edits a bit. Was that? Yeah, yeah control it. Got new yes. notes. Edit it. Then you can push it. Not create some. No, no, but basically go back to the. Uh, uh, My new notes. Yeah. Oh, no. What oh, happened? No, there is no uh, hashtag for me. Oh, there has to be an hashtag. Yeah, just add to the uh, hashtag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Control this. Good. Then you can start typing back, actually, doing the same. Mm -hmm. So all this content that you create is stored on your laptop, on your uh, browser at the moment. So and what I want to know, so if you all have, uh, uh, understand this pattern, so with brackets and parentheses, actually, so we can apply the same. For example, uh, if we have a link of an image to what we would want to refer it's basically it's basically also a link to which we give a name or we image one and it's not embedded it's just linked why because we have to highlight this so this is something that's not an ordinary link so it's actually an image and the standard markdown format for this is just to highlight this to add in uh, explanation mark in front of it and then the image will be automatically embedded into it and you can do the same also for the other uh, ones No, there is too simple. There's a or someone added some additional things to it. So, and the thing, there's also a shortcut for this. If you add this image, you just have to highlight the link in this case and just uh, use this image button, for example, and you will generate something like a new image or embed this image. And one thing that's possible in Leo script, but not in the others, if you have something, I have like now a slide with three images. But whatever multimedia content it is, and I want to generate, for example, like a gallery out of it. So from our perspective is, if you just create something like a paragraph, uh, which consists only of multimedia content, so no new lines added. So actually, it doesn't make sense. So one paragraph to have all those images. But in the script, we'll create something like a, a gallery for this, if you want to. So we can simply skip through. So images are okay. So images are basically only links with uh, exclamation marks. Yeah. And then to have the shortcuts. So if you see this, okay, there's this exclamation mark used. If I want to embed audio content, so what would you choose probably? 
would there be to highlight this? So if the exclamation mark is a bit, uh, an image, you know an idea? So we actually use a question mark. It's somehow from our perspective, it's the opposite to exclamation mark and it looks like an ear, for example. So if you add some uh, audio file, probably that you were linked to, or it could be also Spotify. So you simply add a link uh, and then in front of it, a question mark. So we go to the next slide, and you have now embedded this uh, audio content. Probably you can also create this on SoundCloud. Here we have additional sound. So in this case, okay, with Spotify it's not working at all. But if you're using this, for example, on SoundCloud, you will try to embed this uh, properly so but it could also be an mp3 that you have embedded in and something like this so and the same thing the easiest way to refer to a video file to a video content is like it's audio and image right so this is just like a, a youtube link that you could would simply share if you go to youtube uh, select the video copy this url the only thing that you have to do is actually to add a you have this shortcut for this an exclamation mark and a question mark in front of it we go to the next slide where the videos are hit control s the video will be embedded and so this works also from different platforms in this case so and it is the same So I'm also using the shortcuts. So question marks, we have now two videos embedded. And, and the same idea, if you want to have multiple videos or combine them with images in the gallery, simply remove the space and generate one paragraph. And you have now this gallery. Now the last part before we leave you into the uh, 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 yeah, lunch is just like everything else. So the question is how can we embed, embed anything else that's on the web actually. So we have these, a couple of examples I see a uh, FED, uh, they are also have a, a, another booth I think I was called, no, they are also in here. So they, they provide these nice uh, simulations, probably. Instead of meta, you know them all, right? So probably I want to embed this simulation into my educational content. Yeah. And it's now the same. It's a link. Refer to it. Add this as a link. <laughs> but now, just for the matter of purpose, it's not a video, it's not anything, it's not else, so what the hell is it? I don't care. You can tell this Leo script. Just simply try to embed this. Simply add two question marks in front of it, so that's the idea. And loading may take time, and now you have this simulation actually embedded to your environment. You can play and refer to it, add text content if you want to explain it. And do the same also with other uh, 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 references. So it's not some 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 systems or the servers don't allow this. That uh, their content should be embedded in this. So you have to try this. Uh, actually, if it works, uh, but most of them allow. This is something like a, a sketch fab from a three D uh, environment three D model. So if you go to show to you and simply like. Sketch that if you look for Google. So it's an online repository for 3D models uh, that you can search like uh, I. For some you have to pay, but you also can uh, choose them by license in this case. Uh, for example, choose like a, a free one. I'll take this link. For example, I simply open this. 
I want to embed this 3D content into my environment, simply copy this link. And this is just like it. So to everything you're referring, you simply add this link. And then the highest plate is simply add two question mark. Try to embed it somehow. It's because some sites offer services that actually tell uh, uh, the embedder how to properly embed this content. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we try to embed this as an iframe. So now there is this eye. So you can see it also. Yeah. So this, this music link is not the redirect? No, Spotify isn't. Uh, the first one isn't working anymore. So? The first one isn't working anymore, I guess. Uh, I have to add another music link. But the second one. Yeah, what I'm saying is that uh, I'm not this is what I'm saying is it's redirected to Spotify. Really? Yes. So Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, it worked, but maybe Spotify changed something. But because when we tested it last time, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. So either we change or they forbid to embed their content probably as a at the moment. So so you see, can embed those three D models simulations or whatever there is on the internet and again if you want to generate something like a gallery out of it simply remove those empty spaces and you can do the same in this gallery fashion and just like one different time just click through it step step onto the next one so this is just the only pattern that you have to remember brackets for the name uh parentheses afterwards just attach for the url mm -hmm. and then an exclamation mark will be an image, uh, question mark, audio, both combined, uh, exclamation mark, question mark, video, and whenever it's something different, ah, you could try Spotify with two question marks in front of it. So, try maybe Spotify tells them better how to embed this content. And that's it, so the, uh, yeah, for this part. So, I think, the last thing, but we do this uh, afterwards before we skip on. So for, for you, the practical part, I would uh, say in the next step, the last thing that we explain is how to add animations and spoken text to it, uh, text outputs. And then we will try to uh, show you how you can share this content uh, partially within the browser, how we use it uh, as an, uh, an open source project in GitHub and what are the benefits of using GitHub probably. Uh, but this will be partially interactive depending on what to otherwise you can just uh, watch it and we can discuss it if it's better than yours okay Sorry. Ah. yeah yeah ah. Uh, afterwards if if uh, because if you think you missed something you had a more detailed uh, course on the last uh, e-learning africa conference mm -hmm. and we did an entire recording because people uh, were complaining about they were only using uh, their, their, their keyboards uh, they were complaining about you have to add something like buttons in this so this was one feature that we added those mm -hmm. uh, buttons uh, to simplify the development process but the entire course uh, where you can do the, actually the same uh, in more detail and more depth is actually also added to uh, YouTube. So, can if you go to our website, um, there's something like the click on the blog, and then you probably can search for e learning Africa from 2023. <coughs> then da, 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 there are these videos so, and uh, yeah we embedded the editor uh, here in this case but you can all the content is also still available so you can uh, access it yeah so everything you simply go to our blog then if you search for Africa or for other content or something like this Africa all the resource you will find it here so this will have some more uh, yeah, more about a little bit 
a tutorial on the belts using creatively a script content. How much? How would be a two pm shot? Enjoy the lunch time. I want to search for Ilya Makovkov. 